Welcome to Rebel Base IGN's weekly Star Wars show. Punch it, Chewie! This week, we had an amazing video about Episode 8 starting production. What a lovely little video it was. It's a very short video. It's a very short video, but I really liked it. It's basically kind of the end of Episode 7, um, where it? we sort of left. It's the beginning of where Episode 8. But it's the beginning of Episode 8. Yeah. But they're saying that's, you know, that's, that's the first scene they're shooting. Is, is it the first that, scene in the movie, though? Could not be the first scene. Thinking movie. about this, like, do you think it's been ages, like, just getting the hair just right? Because I think Mark Hamill's continued to lose weight. Yeah. So... <sighs> You never know, he could have just... He's, yeah, that, his that hair bit, looks amazing. Yeah, he's done it. Oh, that, when I'm his age, I have hair like that. That bit could have just been... It would have been really cool if Ryan Johnson had filmed the end of episode seven. Also, this is a bit disingenuous, Might as well. this video. Why? I'm slagging it off immediately. But <laughs> saying production has just begun. Yeah. But they were filming those scenes on that island last year. Yeah. We knew they were, they were doing shooting there, so... Production, yeah. production has begun, but it kind of started a few months ago. Well, I said this to you the, the other day. So I'm going to New York in April. So I was looking at like shows uh, to go and see. And Lupita Nyong'o is in a show from that's just started or started before and is going all the way through to the summer. So episode episode seven took three months to shoot, right? So is she not going to be in much of it? Or they must have already done her bits. You could probably do her bits in New York. Like over Skype. See, just do it over Skype. Um, just, um, you got any of those dots? Stick any, some dots on your you got face. Any ping pong balls. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. She's like, I want an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, but the video was there anyway. And we also got an announcement um, confirming what we thought, or we kind of known for ages, because Benicio del Toro won't stop shutting up about it, um, that he is going to be in episode eight. Uh, also, a new cast member, Kelly Marie Tran, who's like a young comedy actress, is going to be in as well. And Laura Dern. Where'd that come from? Yeah. Well, the press release. They came like, from the press release. I love Laura Dern. Yeah. Oh, it does help that I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm not, like, that's still the role that I always think of. Her. Like, I've seen her in two David Lynch films and yeah. stuff, but... No, she, she'll always be Ellie Sadler to yeah. me. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll write a song about that. <laughs> but, She's always at least had to, to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> but straight away, the internet, as it likes to do, is theorizing um, that Dern is going to oh, play. Yeah, we, we, we would never do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> is going to play. Bloody internet. Luke Skywalker's lover and Ray's mother. Now. As we've said before on this show, uh, this could be the first time you're watching or listening to it, but as you said before, I really don't want Ray to be Luke's daughter. I think no. that's, I think that's too easy. It's too obvious, but... I don't want Luke to have sex. <laughs> Why? Just don't... He'd be a very frustrated man. Yeah, good. Channel it. <laughs> so you don't want him to have... Not only do you never want him to have sex, but you then he's gone to this little island by himself. Yeah. Like, he's going around the bend. <laughs> <laughs> It's what he needs. He needs to focus <laughs> and get his stuff together because it's been a mess on his watch. Maybe it's maybe it's like yeah, it's a, I bet it's a mess there if he's been by himself. But hey, may, hey now. maybe it's like um, you know in Buffy when Angel has sex, then he turns naughty. Maybe that's what it's he like. Turns naughty, <laughs> yeah. kills those people. Maybe that's what it's like with um, Jedi's and Siths. Like oh, once they teenage boys, once they crack one out, like they become Sith lords. Yeah, they never, that's the thing they never talk about. But anyway, so I think, right, so I do possibly think, as much as we say we don't like going on about people theorizing about lineage and stuff like that, I want to put that to one side and think, I really think that Laura Dern is going to be playing Evan Verlime, who is a character that was introduced in the um, Princess Leia New Marvel comics. And it's this lady up here, or if you're listening... Just Google it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but she was like someone who was brought up by um, Queen Organa. So she was brought up by Princess Leia's adopted mother yeah. and was sort of <clears throat> uh, put into the sort of Rebel Alliance. Uh, she was a big, big, really, really successful pilot. And in the comics then sort of pledges her allegiance to Princess Leia. Okay, so and she moves like within those circles. Exactly, it's, yeah. No, Luke would have known her. Definitely, yeah, because they're really good friends and they she sort of pledges her life to her, almost like uh, Brianna Tarth in Game of Thrones. It, it's true, that's something they've seeded quite early with yeah. the writers group. And definitely, it'd be interesting yeah. to see how many, like what the kind of strata of like trusted storytellers is, because that's mm. going to be like a big 
plot point. Yeah, definitely. Because that's the main episodic films. And then does, how does that fi- filter down to, I think it's Charles Sewell, who wrote yeah. Princess Leia. Is he told the significance of that character? He's like, or there's this character you have to work in. Yeah. We would like you to hit these beats and have these interactions with these characters and we'll check it and give you notes. Because how wide do you want yeah, that knowledge that's really going? interesting. Because you, while you'd like to seed that stuff, you don't want that secret out there. Yeah, that's really interesting though. But it, imagine how hard that is to actually be right in that. Stressful. <laughs> like, imagine being the person overseeing all that going, oh, I didn't tell the bloke. Yeah. Oh my God, he's going to have to redraw it. <laughs> no, it's because it's like doing that, you know, that game where you like fold paper over. Yeah. And like you're doing the legs, somebody else is doing the torso, someone's doing the head. That's what it's like. It's like you're doing just a tiny, tiny bit Do of this picture. you think Colin Trevorrow is going to turn away? He's going, oh, for fuck. <laughs> what have you given me? Oh, but I really like that. I really like the idea. But at the same time, like, I don't know if I worked at, this probably while I, I should probably now work <laughs> at these places, but I don't think, say you were drawing and writing this guy, um, with writing this uh, comic, sorry. Yeah. And I said to you, like, oh, you should do that, uh, um, Van Valheim. Wink, wink. She, she, she might, uh, she might resurface at some point. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stop myself from doing that. What? Are you too much pressure, then. Uh, oh, you're doing that with her. Ooh, interesting. I would like, I'd like to meet the person who just knows everything. There's got because it can't be that many. It people. must be like the story trust, mm. like they have at Marvel. It yeah. must be a group. Well, JJ's on it. I think he said that as well. Yeah. He's still involved. It would be Trevor now, Johnson, Kazdan, yeah, Kennedy. Imagine being in that room. I I just wouldn't be able Imagine to Imagine the walk. catering. I would I, I wouldn't be able to walk around. I wouldn't be able to walk around the street without running up to someone and being like, You never guess why I fell in front of him. Just tell <laughs> like, him. Right, he's lost his job. You like Google with the big red button. Yeah. Do not press. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a really like she's around the same it's gonna be around the same age, which is really, really good. Um Her dad's Bruce Stern. Her dad is Bruce Stern. I think we've I, it's gotta be her. Got to so be. So she could be Ray's m- mum, but not Luke's. That's what you're thinking. I think so, yeah. You'd like her to be... Well, just because like she's a really, really good like pilot and sort of soldier Which is skill set that she has. And also that, yeah. you know, we've had that before in Star Wars where um, Anakin was a very good pilot. And yeah. his son turned out to be a very good pilot. Yeah. I, th- I think it's something about like the force in you as well. It's like that, That's definitely helping. I think that like, ability. R- whereas like if you had a son, he might not be an excellent games writer. But if he was force sensitive, he might absorb some of those th- things. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Maybe that's how the force works. I, I, don't, think I definitely works. think the force helps with being a pilot because yeah. it helps you predict Stuff. the world around you. It's, it's, you know. Yeah. But that's what we think anyway. We think Laura Dern is Evan Verlinem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll just call her Evan or Eve. Evan. Yeah, Evan. You'd love that. Oh, that'd be brilliant, yeah. Um, <laughs> Another bit of sad news, though. What? They're trying to ban Yoda from London. What? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the So Gabriel Finaldi, the new creator of the National Gallery, uh, wants to get rid of Yoda from London. What's, what's, what's Finaldi's problem with... Well, he says Yoda's a nuisance and he shouldn't be allowed to come to the National Gallery in Trafalgar Square. Uh, apparently, sometimes Yoda likes to hang about outside the National Gallery... Uh, like begging for money, make, doing tricks with tourists and stuff it's, like that. It's sad. It's, what's, <laughs> it's sad what's, what's, what, what's become of Yoda. Like once. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so if you've ever been to Trafalgar Square outside the National Gallery, there's a bunch of street performers there. And, a, a, and Yoda's become a street performer. <laughs> Just doing force tricks. Um, He's turning force tricks yeah. <laughs> after dark. But one, a really popular one. And I went down there before, and there was like there's like four Yodas down there basically because there's this like street trick where it looks like you're floating. So obviously for Yoda, that's a really good one. But yeah. it just really it looks really, really creepy. Um, but Gabriel Finaldi, who's the new curator, cu- curator, sorry, says he's trying to get rid of it all out there and wants something a little bit more fitting with the National Gallery. <laughs> Not loads what, of stuff. With the street art, performers. Yeah. The performance art. Yeah. Um, I don't, well, I don't, it's so one, obviously not a Star Wars fan. Yeah. <laughs> not a fan of street art or performance art. I'm not a massive fan of street performers in general, but I do get a kick out of walking past and seeing like five Yodas as if like, have they not talked about this before? <laughs> no, they've got, well, they're just catering to demand. Star yeah. Wars big again. 
But like, I, I started reading more about it as well. And these, they're mostly um, sort of Romanian and they get bussed into London. Like, so they obviously work for one big sort of company, but... Um, they work for a company? I guess so, because they all get bussed in together. I watched the documentary on Channel 4 about... Um, like Romanian immigrants and mm. this guy who was sleeping rough, but yeah. he saved enough money to buy himself a costume, right. which is basically just he was just like a big gold man. <laughs> like he's <laughs> <friend. laughs> <laughs> he just had he got like a suit and I think he just like spray painted it gold. Yeah, and he just went around That's a big one and he just yeah. stood around as a big gold man, like a big metal man. Yeah. He didn't work for a company or anything. Well, like, these... It's the opposite of working for a company. It's very much <laughs> no, but I think working that, for yourself. Not not a company, but I think maybe they're part of like a group. Um, a maybe, blue man group. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know how much they make a day? So they're out there from 5 a.m., right? To get a good spot, you've got to be down to Valgus Square at 5 a.m., right? And they go until the night time. Oh. Do you know how much they make a day? A couple of quid. 20 quid. And this curator guy is like, no more Yodas, get them away. What, what 20 quid, mate, they're making? Let them let be. If he wants to, like, float around... Yeah. The most annoying thing is the uh, I read this on the Daily Mail article and they just debunked how they actually float. No, and, no and don't I didn't do know. that. Yeah. It's really no, it was Mitch Pledgey writing it? <laughs> it's actually like this is one line and it's so throwaway, but it's just like some of them uh, they basically all use wires and uh, wood wires like thing. I think it's like wire. There's no wire wiring. work in that. No, there's wiring and wood apparently. There's just a metal pole coming up there. No, I know that, but like I think there's wires in the actual cloak okay, and uh, stuff. Yeah. You know why you didn't realise you were spending too much time looking at the sexiest systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think it's sad to get rid of those things, even though they're creepy. Uh, yeah, and you know, if you ask Turner, if you ask Constable, if yeah. you has, ask George Stubbs, yeah. do you mind? <laughs> A homeless man five dressing, dressing up as a Yoda, They're not or five of them. Not some, hom- some of them might be. Some of them might be. On the documentary I saw, he was very much homeless. Oh, really? And he was dressing up as a big gold man. Oh. Do you mind this? They would say no. Do you reckon they get Because a lot of the artists in that museum yeah. know what poverty was like. Exactly. Exactly. In another time, <laughs> Turner might have dressed up <laughs> as, as Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Did you watch the new Star Wars series that premiered this week, Daniel? Did you know this was happening? What? There's a new Star Wars series that just yeah, premiered. Out of it's called The Resistance Rises, and it went on Disney XD. So it's an animated Lego series. Cool. Um, and it's not the droid thing that we've heard about. Droid Tales. Droid Tales. It's not that. It's basically a series of shorts that tell the story of a lot of the characters who are in The Force Awakens. So we've had confirmation from Lego and Disney that they're going to feature Kylo Ren, Han Solo, Finn, BB-8, Maz Kanata, and more. This first one features Poe Dameron and Admiral Akbar, who's been kidnapped by the First Order, and Poe Dameron has to bust him out. Now, it is very silly. They're really funny. I had a really good time watching it. It is essentially an advert for Lego, for the Lego. And the cynic, the cynic in me sort of feels that that's a bit cheap and dirty, but... Because the production level on it is so good, yeah, um, I kind of don't mind. I think I don't have kids, so and, they're and not think, bugging me to come out. I'm growing stuff. up. Did you like any of the cartoons you watched any less? Yeah, like, and they were Transformers, Transformers, Turtles, yeah. Ghostbusters. They were good as yeah. well. So I mean, you, you can as long as they balance the two things. It's not just like I think it is a good balance. I think the only the only thing the sort of cynic in me was sort of my alarm was going off slightly. By the fact that the you're a Lego alarm clock. By a Lego alarm clock. By the fact that the um, the ships move exactly like the rather than the actual ships in the film, they move like the actual Lego Based sets Lego. do. And we've talked about this before, where you know the people designing Kylo Ren ship, for instance, they only saw a very uh, like early sort of drawings and things like that, so they didn't actually see how the wings work. Which is why, if you buy the Lego Kylo Ren it uh, shuttle, mechanism. it's got a different mechanism. But in the series. It moves exactly like the Lego thing that comes down rather than go like flaps out. And I kind of thought that was a little bit interesting um, because why why do that, I guess, now? But uh, then, you know, I guess people who are buying the Lego afterwards are going to be like, why is it moving? Yeah. But then at the same time, but then there's another bit as well, which is not quite as... I don't think it's cynical, but there's another, there's another bit where... Poe Dameron's X-Wing uses the exact same mechanism to take out two TIE fighters. So, like, Poe Dameron's X-Wing, sort of, the wings open up, like, sort of flick open. And it's really cool. It's really impressive. But it uses that to get rid of two TIE fighters. Uh, and sort of, and I kind of think, like, that's a bit. But at the same time, as you say, yeah. you know, 
Did you and enjoy the, the bit where it says, yes. go into your mum and dad's wallet <laughs> and... Yeah, it's not it's not quite like that. They're ve- it's very funny, though. Um, C-3PO, uh, whatever you think of him, like a lot of people find him as an annoying character, but he's got a couple <laughs> of the really, really good lines. And him and Poe Dameron have this really funny back and forth where like, C-3PO sort of mentioned his red arm and really sort of needling Poe Dameron to go... All right, what's with the arm then? Tell me about the arm. You know, this, this arm thing <laughs> better be bloody good. Yeah. They are trailing it so hard. Like, the comic's coming out very soon, I think. Mm. This better be bloody good. I like it. I like the idea. I know, but come on. Yeah. What is it? It's probably going to be something really rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but there's a really there's a really nice moment as well where uh, C-3PO goes, Oh, R2, I'd recognise that beep anyway. And it turns out it was not R2, it was actually BB-8. Uh, coming up but there's going to be loads more of them I'm really looking forward to see the Maz Kanata ones because I think we're going to find out little bits more about her a little bit more about Maz and, yeah. and the kind of sets that she likes to live in yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can watch them they're on uh, Disney XD's YouTube channel and they will be appearing throughout Disney XD if you're watching that on telly as well but but there's more but Star there's more Wars Lego. TV and stuff. It's more Star Wars Lego it's more Star Wars TV and this is a thing called the Freemaker Adventures now have you heard about this? I keep, yes, I have. I keep calling it the Freemason Adventures. <laughs> very different show, very different Lego set. <laughs> but I do kind of want it. Little Lego paddle. Yeah. This is the thing that was talked about a good long while ago, but kind of like teased where they said, we're going to be making a comedy series. And then it, it transpired. It wasn't actually going to be like, you know, like a sitcom, but actually a comedy series based in the Lego world um, with completely new characters. And they're going to be called the Freemakers. Now, you don't really like the logo, do you? I don't... The logo doesn't look very Star Wars to no. me. It looks more like there's... Um, oh, what's it called? There's a new Lego line of, like, knights. Right. It's like Nexon Knights or something okay. like that. It reminds me of that. It looks to me, that font and typeface, looks more like medieval knights. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's an element of that to Star Wars. Yeah, but it doesn't yeah. look like Star Wars to me. Yeah. So, I'll read you out what it says, right? So, this takes place between uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, right? So, it's all about a family of scavengers. The series stars the Freemakers, a family of scavengers who build and sell starships from the scoured debris of space battles strewn across the gal- galaxy. That's a really cool idea. When the youngest discovers a natural connection with the Force through an ancient artifact, the Kyber Saber, his world is turned upside down and he and his family are thrown into an epic struggle against the Empire to restore peace and freedom to the galaxy. Sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Sounds a lot like Rey. That's what Ray's mm. doing. She's a scavenger. Maybe she'll have some connections to them. I don't know. It's I thought you were going to say it's a bit like Scrappy Challenge. It is a bit like Scrappy Challenge. But it's got Vader and the Emperor on the poster, so they'll likely be the naughty people in it, I think. Um, but there was some Lego stuff revealed at Lego Toy Fair, right? Including their Star Scavenger ship. Now, when I first saw this, it doesn't actually have... It didn't have the Freemaker Adventures logo yeah. on it. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's Rogue One. Yeah. That was Rogue One yeah. stuff. But yeah. then I dug a little deeper and... Freemaker. It's the Freemakers. Freemakers. Freemakers, yeah. But the really cool thing, right, is it featured another... So that they revealed the Star Scavenger ship and the Eclipse Fighter ship. And with the Eclipse Fighter, you get, like, two baddies. One, and one of them is near a Lady Sith um, with she has that sort of, like, flowing black hair. Now, initially, I thought she looked a lot... <laughs> flowing rigid hair. Flowing rigid hair. Um, now, so on one of the images I've seen... It's a lady's face. On another one, it's like all scarred. So I wonder if she has two faces because of something that happens in mm. the series, maybe. Um, but it's good to see like a, a good lady Sith who's obviously going to figure prominently. Um, she's got a cool little red lightsaber. I'm, re- I'm like, I'm kind of excited about it. Some new characters, yeah. Yeah. So is this a TV show as well? Yeah. It is a TV it's show. It's a TV show and also Lego stuff as well. Mm. Uh, lots of Lego. They're getting a lot of like free reign as well as well. I watched a really good video... Um, the other day, and basically talking with uh, the people who are making the Lego Force Awakens game, um, and is there's a really good writer who's worked on a lot of them, a guy called Graham Goering, and he was talking about how they've written um, and how they've made the Kylo Ren versus Han Solo sort of scene in the film, because how do you do that in Lego? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of kids playing it with their parents. Yeah. Getting ideas. <laughs> yeah. Just like... How would you do that? I actually don't like my dad much. Um, <laughs> every, I only see him every other weekend and we have to play this game. Get um, him on a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> dad, can I speak to you in the kitchen? Yeah. Um, oh, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm interested for that. I think like Lego usually do some, uh, something pretty interesting with uh, Star Wars stuff. So I'm excited for that. But it could be, you know, it's billed as a comedy series. So 
I assume it's going to be quite young comedy. Strange. I, I wonder how excited I'll get based on the Lego set, directly based on the Lego set. Yeah. <laughs> I get excited about getting Kylo Ren's ship in Lego. Cause yeah. It's, it's a recreation in Lego form of a big spaceship. You get a kick out of that. You're like, oh, that's Or cool, Slave yeah. One or an X-Wing. Yeah. Whereas that, I'm watching in the show and it already is Lego. Yeah. Uh, I find that slightly less satisfying, I think. Yeah, I know what you mean, actually, because, like, I I would never buy... The, the Lego that I buy is all Lego stuff like that, like stuff that's based on, like, other stuff from movies and things like that. Like, I never... I would never think, like, oh, Lego City Undercover, that's a good yeah. car, I'm going to get that. Flip, on the flip side, maybe kids find that more because you're having... You, you got exactly the same thing. Yeah, I suppose. So there might be some value in that. Yeah, maybe. There we go. Different for different people. Exactly. So let's have some force feedback then, Daniel. Um, I'm going to kick off with Troy Evans. Hey, guys, I'm an Australian in China. Mm. In The Force Awakens, C-3PO is still thanking Darth Vader for everything. Oh, thank the maker, he's heard to say. I know he's had a few hilarious memory-wise, but a long time has passed. You'd think Luke or R2-D2 would fill him in, or am I missing something? I think that's really funny. Mm. That's something I never thought about as well. Like, is he always saying to thank the maker and be like, do you know who made you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't thank him. He's a shit. This is, this is why we're doing all this. <laughs> he literally made the world We could have just been like at home. This. You could have just been doing translation. You still you wouldn't have a red arm no, that, yeah I, just, I, like, I actually quite like having the red arm yeah because I got to go on about talking point yeah <laughs> a party <and> <laughs> I like yeah. that um, Aaron Jones I'm no one from nowhere oh, recently oh. there's been a bit of discussion <laughs> about comic book films going the way of the western mm. and this got me thinking besides the validity of that claim could Star Wars ever go the way of the western by that could there come a day when audiences get bored of Star Wars and the films don't do well I imagine this wouldn't be for decades but still could happen so the way I guess so it's saying that people are going to get fatigued by it yeah so this spring this this goes back to something Steven Spielberg said about comic book movies mm. um, comparing them to the decline of the western as a valid commercial genre yeah. a popular genre in Hollywood in like the 50s and 60s there were hundreds and hundreds of westerns in production yeah. and then because of maybe those tropes getting tired Hollywood moves on and backs the next big genre. Yeah. And you've got these cycles throughout time. In the 80s, slasher films are really popular. They yeah. die off. Um, I don't know about that claim because I think, Star, I think Star Wars is an anomaly in so many ways. It's a unique cultural phenomenon that yeah. kind of excludes it from being talked about in that kind of ter that well, way yeah, I think I, I think like I think you could argue it with maybe like superhero films because that's broad where Star Wars is Star Wars it's a very focused thing yeah. it's a very focused property so you can't say like you know they m not everyone is making a Star Wars film yeah. sort of thing but a lot of people are making yeah, and you could films. say like, like what I do what I think could happen is um, you get this a lot because Hollywood is not concerned with aesthetics it's concerned with economics yeah. and if it knows something is popular it will fund more of said thing yeah. um, there's a great story the alien got greenlit off the back of the success of the original Star Wars right. Fox had that script kicking around for ages and they felt buoyed by the success of Star yeah. Wars to go we've got what, get me all the sci-fi scripts yeah. you've got green light it give it to this young di there's British an alien director. how many aliens one awesome. alien mm, awesome alright got a young British director he's great Let's yeah. give it to him um, so we'll get more and more sci-fi films I think in light of Star Wars more kind yeah. of epic sci-fi films so there might become a time where people kind of get a bit bored we reach saturation point of sci-fi films but Star Wars is such a phenomenon that I think it's yeah it excludes itself from that discussion. I just think it's different. Like, when I think of sci-fi, I don't think Star Wars, but I would think of something like Alien, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think of Star Wars as just his own thing. Yeah. And I think that's why it's probably But, like, they could, like, if the... Outside of, like, once we get past episode nine... Yeah. How many... How frequent those films are could have an impact on... Yeah. I guess general interest to a degree, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the Western, I think, I think there were hundreds of them being made, so it's slightly different. By different people as yeah. well, not by the same person, yeah. Um, this is from Chaz Kleckley. What an amazing name. Hello, guys. Chaz Kleck, Chazwick Kleckley, writing from Norwich, Connecticut. Love for Fuzzball and Gnome Face, by the way. Can't wait for the T-shirts. Well. Someone made an amazing drawing of us. Are uh, you going to put it up? But, yeah, I'll put it up. What now? Well, now I have to die because you said. No, I'll do that. Um, but, but, <laughs> but this drawing is ridiculous. Like You look so it, angry. It's the guy. And I look so sad. It's the guy who 
coined the phrase. Is it? Is that right? I don't know. Because he's like apologising for... Oh, right, okay. I thought he was just apologising for the drawing. Um, Basically, you look angry. I don't look... Ar- I look like I've been run over. <laughs> I look... It's I pretty look funny. deformed. <laughs> I look like Mr. Punch. <laughs> yeah, you really do. I look like Mr. Punch. <laughs> and it, you look like this big, sad, gentle bear of yeah. a man. It looks like you're going to kill someone. You're going to kill a lady because you think she's pretty. I've got a lot of booze on me. And then I have to take you out back and shoot you. Yeah. (laughs) That's the end. That's the season finale of Fuzzball and Gnome. Come on, he's like, okay. Yeah. Okay, so he says, don't know if you have this in the UK, but February in the States is Black History Month. As a huge Star Wars fan being a kid, I would always get teased for dressing as Han Solo, even though he was my favourite. Because I'm black, people would tell me you've got to be Lando or Mace Windu, even though I felt no connection to these characters. When I saw the trailer for Force Awakens, my heart leapt at how diverse the new movie looked. My daughter, who is biracial, her mom is from Wales. <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely no one loves Ray. And I'm scared she will get the same comments, although she is much lighter in skin tone than me. I'm just wondering if you guys feel like Star Wars has done better at being more diverse and if you feel like it still has a long way to go. Seriously, love you guys. Watch your every week with my four year old little girl. She thinks your actions are amusing. She's right. They are. They're hilarious. Brilliant. Mine's. Yeah. People are always <laughs> laughing at my accent. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the little snippet of the Welsh national anthem you did. Yeah. That was nice. I was actually doing Van Morrison's <laughs> Van Morrison well. song. <laughs> I was doing Van Morrison, that Jackie is, Wilson said. That is sucky growing up. You, you have to be Lando. You know, the guy who betrays his friends. Yeah, yeah. You, you be that guy. Yeah. Um, I think that's awful. Because... Oh, uh, we don't have Black History Month in no. the UK. Don't we? I don't think we do. Not, not, in, the, not in the way that America has. No, it. no, definitely not, no. Um, but yeah, I think people... Great. Kids, if, that, if we do have it, I don't know. Now I look like a racist. Yeah. Um, I think people are just idiots, aren't they? People are idiots. I don't know. I think the new Star Wars film is awesome. Like, yeah. I was thinking, like, um, I've got a nephew, but I've got a niece. And I yeah. think it's amazing that the lead character, in terms of, like, gender equality as well, mm. is a badass yeah. she's awesome like my little niece is dressing up as Ray, and my my cousin sent me pictures of her and Aww. she just loves it and like this thing which I think you know like a lot of the Marvel stuff like my nephew really loves yeah. and my nieces don't really because there's no one no. like they think they're fun but there's no one for them to go that, that is me yeah represent that exactly. is me yeah, yeah. and in the way that Star Wars has and they're dressing up as Ray, and they can have this awesome yeah. hero they can watch for the next 10 years Brilliant. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, if your daughter ever does dress up as Ray, send us a photo, definitely. Cool, what have you got? Cole. Cole Pollard. Um, hey, Fuzzball. And, um, are we gonna, is this now a thing? Yeah. I'm not encouraging it. Well, I am. We've highlighted it. <laughs> um, Cole Pollard here from Appleby, Cumbria. Ooh. It says boring, I know. I don't think that's boring. It's called Apples. Applebee sounds nice. Yeah. Whilst watching your st- show last week, I started thinking about Captain Phasma's origin. Mm. I thought that it may be possible that Captain Phasma could possibly be Boba Fett's daughter. The time scale may just oh, add don't up. Care. If at the start... <laughs> Why do you put this in? <laughs> I didn't highlight this. <laughs> oh, I did. If at the start of Return of the Jedi, Boba Fett already had an infant daughter, wouldn't it make sense that the Empire wants to utilise her potential ability in the future? Yeah, yeah. this idea could be expanded upon in the Boba Fett movie, even though it may be less interesting. Yeah, well done. Cracked it. Um. <laughs> You're so rude to people. No, it's just like, I do like the idea. You, you cannot do this. Absolute hypocrite. <laughs> no, I understand I the point for your behalf, Cole. You spend the first section of the show theorizing who Laura Dern is. Someone else does it. You go, ah, poor mate, poor. What are you doing? Yeah, no, you're right. I'm wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying consider another perspective. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, I did spend the other week talking for about 15 minutes about how I thought Captain Phasma was a Gungan. Still getting, yeah, still getting absolutely. <laughs> and that's probably what Cole's referring to. He sat through that rubbish going, <laughs> this is actually a more credible theory. I'll write it in, see what the guys think. You? Yeah, yeah you actually, I feel bad now. Sorry, Cole. Um, I think that's a very plausible idea. Well done, Cole. You've done your research. Um... You should, you should do a Star Wars show where you do. Don't, you, 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 I, I you, were, I, t- you were toned <laughs> and you say more now and you're going back the other way. I don't know what to say. Okay, I think. Sometimes it's nice just to say sorry. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. I think that's All right. Move I, on. I think that's a brilliant theory. Uh, Unbelievable. Here's Kwame Kanaku uh, from Ghana who says, Here's my theory. <laughs> it is. 
said in canon that Snoke had several apprentices before Kylo Ren. Is this said in Canada? Okay, yeah, said in Canada that canon uh-huh. that Snoke had several apprentices before Kylo Ren that he valued the balance of the light and the dark in his apprentices. Also, know that Snoke witnessed everything that happened in the old Empire. Now, in the Star Wars Rebels mid-season trailer, Darth Maul makes an appearance. I think that Snoke found Maul and took him on as an apprentice. Snoke then sends Maul to seduce Ezra Bridger. Uh, who's a big character in Star Wars Rebels, to the dark side, which in the trailer is made clear that Ezra is vulnerable to the dark. So he's theorizing that he really thinks that Benicio Del Toro is going to play Ezra Bridger. Wow. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, like, the next movie, if any of these characters that we know from Rebels or the comics do... Got to. Yeah. Like, we we discussed this about, like, the casting of that. Like, yeah. it's really cool if they do. And then suddenly... It's amazing for Rebels, because suddenly after that, everyone's interested, like, I'll buy the box set. Yeah. Well, this just, is the origin story of that character. What? I just think um, <laughs> Rebels is so good and has been so well received that there's no, there's no way that at Disney they can't be going, oh, God, people really like this stuff. So even if they didn't have an idea before that maybe it would be connected, they've got to be going. It's really cool. We've come up with these amazing characters that everyone has taken to like that like people properly love them and like it's when you start watching rebels you get into it really quickly yeah, yeah. and that's definitely true like star wars fans watch that show and yeah. kids watch that show but then like for the wider audience who probably don't watch it you can then market the box set afterwards yeah. when, oh, it's the origin story of the new bad guy what? yeah I when know. did you when did you make this yeah making it for years mate been making it for years that'd be yeah. wicked wouldn't it right Imagine if that happened Niles from Florida. Ooh. Just started listening to the show now that it's on iTunes and I'm hooked. So, Excellent. So you can get our uh, show on iTunes every week if you want. Since I'm new, you might have already discussed this in the past, but I was wondering what your thoughts are on an Obi-Wan live action movie. In my opinion, Ewan McGregor was the best part of The Phantom Menace. And from what I've heard rumoured, he's open to returning to the franchise. Already has, in a way. Yeah. And Obi-Wan Darth Maul rematch live action would be amazing. I think this would be far more interesting than the Han Solo or Boba Fett movie. I really hope Disney is at least throwing this idea around. Yeah, I really hope so. I think the fact that they used his voice and uh, he's been connected with The Force Awakens. Well, he, he, he recorded a new line. Yeah. So it's not like even they used old oh, stuff. Oh, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. he came in. So he, he has reprised the role yeah. for Force Awakens. Imagine. Also, like... Yeah, he's brilliant. You mentioned Darth Maul in that last email. Like... Disney really keeping that character in play yeah. for whatever reason. Like they know people like it, it's popular, but I wonder if it has more significance. Good toys as well, that's why. Good toys. But yeah, I think we've talked about it before. I think he is one of the saving graces of the prequel, so I think got only. Even though if you watch the making of documentary, he knows it's rubbish when he's making it. Do you think? There's some I don't know, there's a bit there's a few looks to camera where I feel like he's you could maybe have that on is any that him from the office when they're like talking about this and he's just like are you, are you serious? Trade. <laughs> uh, Stuart Fletcher, greetings from Salt Lake City, Utah. I wouldn't expect you to know where that is. I know where that is because I was a big fan of the show Big Love, which I think is set there. Uh, but hey, my question is, do you think Ray needs a romantic interest in this new trilogy? There's been rumors of a possible relationship with Poe Dameron and her chemistry with film was definitely present in The Force Awakens. However, I think she's remained single and focused more on the safety of the galaxies as Luke was during the original trilogy. Um, I don't really know. I don't, I'd rather Poe Dameron and Finn have a, a romantic relationship. I think that would be awesome. I felt like the film sets up Finn. It definitely does. Yeah. Like at the end when she says goodbye to him and like he obviously is into her and but to be honest, he's he's not seen another woman for Yeah, exactly. He's only seen Phasma. Yeah. And she's always got that oh, she's pretty Always mean having him. a go at him. But I, I, yeah. <laughs> get, get down to reconditioning. I, oh. the thing that I liked about them, he did, there's a line in it where he asks like go boyfriend. Um uh, go hard boyfriend. But I think I really like them just to have a really good friendship. Like 'cause I think that sometimes can be a lot better than yeah, exactly. I mean, than than sex. Yeah, um, I think what we have it would be is way better than what that would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we run out of ideas for Rebel Base, who knows? Have you yeah. got a last bit? Yeah, it'd be a really good breakout. <laughs> since Benicio del Toro, this is Ben Barker. Yeah. Uh, since Benicio del Toro has been cast in Episode Eight and is rumored to be playing a villainous role, yeah, I'd like to speculate a bit on his identity. Introducing a brand new villain would be a bit odd, since we already have. This is the Ezra Miller one. Is it? Ezra Miller. He's Ezra Miller. He's Ezra Miller. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I there's think Ezra I, from um, Rebels. I meant, so I, meant to, I meant to put those together. Ben's making the same point. Yeah. Which we've covered. 
Yeah. And it's a good point. Thanks, e- Bev. Excellent. Uh, if you want to get in touch, you can. Rebelbase at IGN.com. And we shall be back next week for more and lots of Star Wars good stuff. That is slick as hell. <laughs> it's because, I don't know why, it's because I don't know why, but as I started doing the outro, I started drawing a circle. You do not have a pen. You do not need a pen. You're talking about... So you haven't got that being there and go, oh, I can't have distractions. And then you arm yourself with a pen. Yeah. All right. That's the end. <laughs>